everyone. My name is Jamie. My name is Mickey. We're both from San Diego, California, and Mickey is my best friend. All right. So, Jamie, when did you start monitoring to prevent cancer? I actually didn't monitor at all because when I discovered it, I was only 36, and usually mammograms start at 40. So, I was just one day showering like normal, singing to Britney Spears. And then suddenly I felt a lump on my left breast and I just had it checked and then one test led to the other. And before I realized it, I was diagnosed with an early stage breast cancer. So this was back in October, 2016, the, the initial diagnosis. Okay. Yeah, I, I was shocked because I thought I was young and I lived pretty healthy. So it was, it was so surreal. When did you start your treatment? I started my treatment uh, the whole year of 2017. So I did chemotherapy and then lumpectomy to take out that lump, radiation, and then hormonal therapy. But unfortunately, after a year and a half of just being in remission, I had a relapse. So I am still on active treatment. It keeps coming back. We changed the treatment. It progresses change drugs again so that's how it it's been working basically but um i'm still very grateful i'm here you know because i've had a lot of close encounters with death and um i'm still alive thank god for my medical team and my support system her family is one of them so yeah Whew, what a journey All right so who supported you during this time and how well number one would be uh of course my chosen family here, Mickey is my best friend and her family. Um, I don't know what I would do if they aren't here. So because uh, I am originally from the Philippines and my family, my biological family, they're all there. So I rely on friends that turned into family, kind strangers, my medical team, colleagues from work. Uh, they're the ones who just took me in like their own family, giving me the attention, the love, the groceries I need, the emotional support. So yeah, uh, it's been quite a journey. And um, I would say Mickey would be my, you know, in case of emergency person. And she's the first person in line that I call if I need something. And I always crash here if I feel like I don't want to be alone and I just need to be surrounded by people. I, I can always come to their house. It's open for me. What specifically was most meaningful or helpful? And how did this support help you on your journey? I think it's the feeling of not being alone because physically you get taken care of by your medical team. But the challenge is the psychological, really, because you always think, oh my God, I'm alone. Am I dying? The anxiety, the depression, it all comes into play. So um, you need people who constantly remind you that they're there for you and that's what they they do to me basically the house is open for me you can just come whenever you can talk to us so it's it's that security of like okay i'm not by myself i have people backing me up in this journey and um yeah because because the cancer diagnosis can make you feel very lonely uh, not a lot of people understand it so sometimes people don't even need to understand they just need to be with you they just need to make you feel that you're you're not by yourself and that's a big big relief okay now your turn all right missy so um how did you how did this experience change or evolve our relationship you think and what are the challenges if there are well jamie's challenging but that's a different story <laughs> i can be <laughs> um the the changes mostly was we've always been close we met back in 2005 in the philippines um we stayed in touch we lost touch jamie traveled a lot i moved back here to san diego i ended up starting a family um when she moved here to san diego in 2015 we became really close again very in instantly she was always at our house um we were always going out we were always eating at restaurants we always we we, we went on like dinner cruises and uh yeah. whatever fun stuff that jamie had freebies to i kind of tagged along and whatever family stuff we were doing she would tag along uh i think if anything changed it was just the type of time we were spending together there was a lot less going out uh, a lot more home-cooked meals and a lot less restaurants fewer dinner cruises 
um, a lot of a lot of time was spent more at home, but it was a lot more time and a lot more quality time. Um, yes. Before the diagnosis, I want to say we we included Jamie for family events because my mom loved her, <laughs> um, and whenever we had like family dinners, we would we would include her. And then whenever she had things that she could go do that she would bring someone to, I was usually her plus one, or me and my husband and my son were her plus three. Um, so what changed really was just that we were at home a lot more. The day before her treatment, my husband made it a habit to ask what she wanted to eat and then he would make it for her that night. Um, sometimes he didn't know how to make it, so he would just put extra effort and watch a lot of YouTube uh, <laughs> <laughs> to figure out how to make whatever she wanted to eat. He, he's a really good cook. Yes, um, Filipino food. Oh my God, how could really, you say no? Really great Filipino yes. food. So he would ask her what she wants. He would make it because he always just said that there, there wasn't a whole lot we could do, uh, but he wanted to at least make her belly happy before her treatments. You know, going to treatments, having a, a nice night before to remember That's on. True. Our older son, he uh, was very young when all of this was happening. So if there were any challenges, I would say that my biggest challenge, a mom and then a friend, was to balance what I wanted him to know and what I still kind of wanted to shield him from. I try my best to be as open with my children as possible. Uh, I didn't want to shield him from a whole lot and I wanted him to see a lot of, like I, I wanted to be as authentic and as genuine with him as I could, um, but still it was scary because we didn't know it was going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. She would go through treatment and then there would be a relapse and then she'd go through a better treatment and then there would be a relapse. Best case scenario, I wanted him to see her sick and see that she got better. Um, and I wanted him to know that sometimes that happens and sometimes it, it, it's, it's okay. I knew that there were possibilities of, um, of something happening, mm -hmm. um, but I still wanted him to, I, I didn't want to not have the experiences together as a family and with Jamie as extended family because we were afraid that something would happen. I think it's important what you said earlier that sometimes people don't understand it. It's okay not to understand because to be honest, I don't understand cancer yes. until now. Until you, you experience um, it, it's very hard to understand. And sometimes she would say something of what the next step was and I, I don't quite understand, but I think one thing that's important was that, okay, whatever you need from us now. Um, I wasn't always thinking about five years from now or 10 years. It was, okay, what's the next step? What do you need us to do? You need dinner? Okay, let's, let's have some dinner. Uh, you need a place to crash? All right, let's have a place to crash. You need someone to pick you up from the hospital tomorrow? Okay, let's let's see if we can do that. You need somebody to be with you when you go and ring the bell? All right, let's do that. Whatever the next step is. Um, so it's just whatever was the next thing that Jamie needed, we would try to provide that. And so, Mickey, I want you to share to them how you supported me in this very cute, noble way and um, what are the rewards and the challenges of supporting someone like me in your life. Uh, in April 2017, Jamie decided she was going to shave her head um, yeah. because she knew that the chemo treatments were going to cause her to lose her hair and she wanted to do the more active, more, more proactive thing of shaving it herself. So yes. she came over to the house. Uh, she asked my husband to shave her head because my husband had clippers and he shaves his own head. Uh, and when they were done, I sat in the chair and I said, my turn. Um, she was very surprised. She cried. Um, <laughs> because her hair was, was this long but I she had long hair I was surprised that you were surprised because I told you that I was going to do it I just thought she was kidding I thought she was just saying it to make me feel you know consoled and it's going to be okay I didn't really think she would do it because she had long hair and, and she I didn't have long need hair to do again. It. It's not that big a deal. It <laughs> grows back. <laughs> um, I felt like shaving my head was something little that I could do something small um, yeah. I know that hair grows back. It was almost like a fun thing to do. Like, let's shave our heads together. I had told Jamie when she was first diagnosed and she was going through possible scenarios with her doctors, she had talked about if she does chemo. And I was like, well, I mean, what do you mean if you do? You're going to do chemo. Like, you've, you've got to fight. And I remember her saying, you know, her hair and her body. And I was like, if you lose your hair, I'll take out my hair too. And I guess she just, maybe because I was nonchalant, she thought that I was joking. So my husband shaved my head. My, my son was also shaving my head. And things like um, that were also important for me to show my son that this is what we do. This is what we do for family, for friends. For friends, yes. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to do it, because like I said, we, we went out a lot. We would do things a lot. And I did not like the thought of people staring at Jamie because she's sick or um, because she's bald. And I thought, well, both of us are bald. 
Maybe no they won't know that. which one is fake. Uh, we're just banger sisters. <laughs> maybe we're just rockers. Um, or, you know, I thought, you know, if, or maybe, maybe they'll know, but they won't, you know. I didn't want anybody like whispering like, oh, that girl over there is sick. They, they might have still done that, but I thought this is something that I could do to kind of make it seem like whatever, we're just, we're just bald. <laughs> <laughs> we're just bald, happy girls. We're just bald, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Nix. I appreciate it. Mm, anytime. Bye. Ah, so lucky. So lucky. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thank bye. you. Bye.